I, I think when it comes to dinosaurs, what I would love to see more is more of the dinosaurs. Like, yes, it's a theme park and that, but you didn't really get the whole feeling that the dinosaurs were the theme park. You know, it seemed to be everything else. And I don't know. I mean, they, 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 they tried too much to be funny. I, I'm sorry. I love nothing more than the whole masher gasher. I'm going to rip you to pieces dinosaur movie. But here's the thing. They wanted to, you know, keep it down to like a PG-13 rating because they want kids to come see this but movie. See, I'm sorry. Growing, uh, growing up, why I loved Jurassic Park the most was not because it was PG-13 or because, you know, it was enjoyable. No, it was because it scared me. It, it made me open my eyes and see everything out there. It, it, I think that's what Jurassic Park was. I think that's what Jurassic World should have been. If they're going to show parts of the past of Jurassic Park, how it was, and, and things like that, you know, go back to the roots and... and do the entire scare tactic that they had. But, I mean, you, to get there, you have to show some of the other stuff. And, I mean, in, I mean, this, again, it's like one big theme park. And, I mean, they had, you know, the little kitty rides where you could go off and you could ride on, like, the baby dinosaurs. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't see... It's, you know... But, like, it, 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 with a theme park based on dinosaurs, um, other than the ones that were off exhibit, how many dinosaurs did you actually see in the entire movie that... You know, we're actually part of the theme. Well, I, I mean, here again, you know, there was the, where there's a you know the little kitty area where the, the little kids could go off and ride on the dinosaurs. There was a scene where you saw people canoeing and kayaking past a bunch of friendly dinosaurs. They had this thing where it's just kind of like SeaWorld where they had this really big dinosaur jumping out of the water and grabbing a shark, and then you were there. The seats were all. All the spectators were sitting lowered so you actually could see him in his natural element. So, I mean, there was a lot of good stuff in there. But when you're watching it, did you feel like the dinosaurs were dinosaurs or nothing more than, say, a petting zoo with goats and zebras? Well, here's the thing. I mean, these are genetically made, you know, dinosaurs so that are bred in captivity. And so in a lot of ways, it is a glorified petting zoo. Well, no, I, I agree. I mean, and that's what it is. You're you're seeing there, you know, you know, here where I mean, that's why people they're coming to see the dinosaurs. Then they're not going to go off, and they're not showing you know the dinosaurs, you know, going off and killing things. But you which know. I, you know what? Even in the originals, like in the second or in, uh, second and third, which you know we we choose to recognize never existed. But even they had more killing and more destruction than what this one had. Well, in the long run, I think just because of the mass number of dinosaurs that you see in this movie, there's actually probably more individual deaths. I mean, that the big crossbreed uh, Rex dinosaur, I mean, he goes off, I mean, and, you know, spoiler alert, he, he goes off and he pretty much goes on a killing spree and, you know, kills a lot of so-called experts, you know, shoot, you know, hunters and stuff. And he just, he shows to be, a, you know, very, or she proves to be extremely intelligent. And I don't want to give away too much, uh, but, I mean, when you think it just how scary it is. Oh, I mean, yeah. there's a scene where the owner of, of Jurassic Park, who, you know, inherited this from uh, John Hammond, Hammond uh, he goes off and confronts the head scientist about this. Uh, about this dinosaur when it gets out, and this head size says, "You were the one who told me to go off and make this. You wanted bigger. You wanted scarier dinosaurs." So okay, we're we're gonna change subject very soon. We're gonna leave this on a few notes. How okay. did, what? How are you reviewing this? Like out of the five stars, I'm gonna go with you know because all in all, it wasn't a bad movie. I'm going with three, three, and see. I'm going to go with, with three stars as well. You know, I thought a lot of the action was great, but, I mean, for the most part, this movie really felt flat. Yeah, it did not live up to expectations. It did not, I mean, and that's the that's the thing. I mean, anytime there's a big gap between, you know, movies like, I, I sort of felt the same way when they brought out Indiana Jones 
and the the ki- Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which is a whole new ballpark, a whole different ballpark. And it says it it wouldn't it have mattered if George Lucas had just you know hit it out of the park when he went off and wrote the script, and Steven Spielberg wanted to directed the crud out of it. It still wouldn't have you know lived up to expectations because we as fans of that franchise have set you know the bar so yeah. high. No, do you think? That this movie is kind of a reality of what would happen if our own scientists got stupid enough and tried to play God with, you know, dinosaur DNA. Honestly, I I could say this. Um, If this park was to really happen, me as a father, I would, you know, be really cautious about taking my son there. Oh, yeah, because it's one thing to tame t- tigers and lions and bears. Oh, my. But it's a whole different ballpark to t- tame velociraptors, well, T-Rexes. A- as as I, it was actually mentioned in, you know, in Jurassic Park, the first movie, you know, there's a reason why, you know, dinosaurs no longer exist. Yeah. And so, I mean, so to play God and to bring back creatures that no longer exist... You know, it's kind of a dangerous thing. Okay, so we are going to move along to one of the biggest topics that we can talk about, which is sad considering we just spent half hour talking about everything else. Well, we're going to talk about Marvel be, do, making the strangest, weirdest decision ever and pulling out of San Diego Comic Con. Okay, and so pretty much. Okay, so and this isn't this isn't necessarily completely Marvel. We're not talking about their comic books and stuff. What we're really talking about is. Marvel's uh, cupping them uh, for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is uh, Aven- Avengers, you know, you know, Avengers, all the TV shows, pretty much anything, you know, that is related to the Avengers. Uh, I yeah. think it's mainly just the, the yeah. Avengers, yeah. like all the char- the subsequent characters, like Iron Man, Captain America, yeah. the Hulk, the- and so pretty much every movie the Marvel Studios has done on their own. Not including Sony from uh, the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, which uh, their their logic behind pulling out of Comic Con. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. This has to be said before we start delving into the rest. Is they are actually worried that if they're going to Comic Con, that all the attention will be on DC and not them. Which so instead, their answer to all that is to pull out. And make the entire Comic Con about DC. Well, while I don't think it's necessarily going to be completely about that, and who knows? I mean, we're talking, they're not going to be showcasing any of their movies. That doesn't necessarily mean that the stars of many of their movies are not going to show up, and there might uh, be some panels with but some. Uh, is there the, a possibility that Marvel's going to turn around and say, well, you know, you have a contract agreement that if we don't appear, you don't appear? That's quite possible. Um, I'm trying to remember who I read. I think it may have been Chris Pratt again. And he had been asking whether they were going to be doing anything at uh, Comic-Con. And he, he wasn't given an answer. So it's quite possible that the only way you're going to see anybody from those movies is if they just say, you know, screw it, I'm going there. And I'm going to be there a fan if people yeah. want to go off. Well, and- is there a possibility, though, if they, if they pull that move and say, you know what, you guys aren't giving me an answer... You're saying you're going, you know, I show up anyways. Well, is there a possibility of them losing their contract for these movies? Or TV shows, depending on what they actually are in. Well, the thing is, I'm not really sure they're contractually obligated to the San Diego Comic-Con to show up. And they probably told beforehand. And again, this is just a rumor. And, you know, uh, there's uh, this is according to a reporter uh, who goes by... The uh, the Twitter name L Mayambi, uh, and he works for Heroic Hollywood. And this we're, is, we're we're sorry if we mispronounced your name. Not really. <laughs> and so this is what, he, and that's what he says. He says because DC and Warner Brothers have got you know they are turning. This isn't the movies that are leading up to Justice League. These aren't just going to be, you know, your typical superhero movies. They want to make these cinematic experiences. They want to make these into really good movies. Yeah, basically, they want to turn Justice League into what the Avengers has become. And, but they want to go off and they want to take it to the next level. Yeah. Where they, they, 
they want to make these movies like super good. I mean, they've hired really talented yeah. directors, really talented writing teams. B- basically, uh, ever since we've been a kid, there's always been that growing battle between Marvel and DC. We have never seen a battle like that's currently going on. DC is starting to really get some big balls. They're taking it to Marvel. Marvel, I think, is a little, little scared of what's going on. And I, I don't know, if, just for me, I mean, I we've both seen the first trailer for Batman vs Superman, and I am you know, and yeah, you you go off and you drop your head, and that's sort of how I felt. I felt completely underwhelmed by it. Oh yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's I think it's one of those fluff pieces where they've. They're focused all their intention on one thing, one thing only, and they're just throwing out fillers to fill time until that comes out. Yeah, and I just, I looked at that, and I said, you know what, this does not make me want to go see the movie. No. Not at all. And, but here's the thing, there there was a rumor of Disney every year, uh, they put on the D23 Expo, and there's a rumor that the reason why Marvel really pulled out of... Uh, uh, San Diego, uh, yeah, San Diego Comic Con, which is the biggest Comic Con. Is it? It literally. I mean, we could just call it Comic Con, yeah, because all others are you know just pretenders to the throne. S- San Diego is basically like Disney World on a bigger scale. It, it's like and, Jurassic and it's, Park it's, and it's Disney th- World put together. It's a three day you know major event, but you know so Disney has does this their D twenty three Expo every year. And the rumor has been that Marvel, which is owned by Walt Disney, want, is planning something really special for D23. And we'll bring this up in a little bit, but you know, there's some pressure on them and Sony to come to an agreement on who, you know, the new Spider-Man and their... Which, you know, I still can't wrap my head around, you know, them working together. Well, the thing is, I mean, it was bound to happen at some point. Disney, uh, pardon me, Marvel, well, Disney Marvel together. We, we might as well just want, stop they, calling it Marvel. Disney has taken over. We might as well all just, you know, all, ha- all our hail heads. our our emperor in chief, you know, Walt Disney. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. All hail, all hail. Uh, but yeah, th- there's talk. I mean, there's pressure to come to an agreement. I will. I'll, Bring that up in a couple of minutes. I just I think it's kind of interesting though because when you look at uh, you know DC Comics, they're only bringing out four movies in the next two and a half years. Now, but see, I'm wondering if they're if that's a strategic move because you know you look at what Marvel did. Marvel threw out movie after movie after movie after movie continuously, and eventually like, people can only focus on so many at a time. Well, I mean, they with, really with, did start. I mean. I mean, it was. It took them um, several years to build up from the Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton, who's no longer even part of the franchise. The the Hulk to even the, the, just get up to the Avengers. The Hulk changes characters more than I think than Spider Man has actors. Well, uh, I mean, when you think about it, now we're working towards the third actor to play Spider Man. Yeah, no, Peter well, Parker. That, that's not even including the voice actors from not the include, TV shows. No, not th- this is just for for movies. This does yeah. not include TV shows. Okay, who, who's your favorite Spider Man? Hands down. Hands down. Uh, well, considering there's only been two, Andrew Garfield. I, I've honestly said that if they no. had played Andrew Garfield's. Uh, Spider-Man for the first three movies, that would have been great. Okay. I, yeah, you, you just touched on exactly what I was going to ask. Andrew Garfield is by far the best Spider-Man, oh. but not the best storyline. And he, here's the thing, and I mean, and I, I feel like we're we're kind of going, you know, chasing you know the rabbit down the rabbit the hole here a little bit and getting a little off topic. But I mean, I had no problems necessarily with. You know, Andrew Garfield, I love Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy. I love that story. It was the crappy villains and yeah, the crappy no, stories. Do- Doctor, uh, the, the lizard man, you know, I'm sorry. As much as I love the villain, you know, he was just done so awfully. It was like probably, it, he was by far the least scary Spider-Man villain. And I think... I saw a list, and he was like the, like, amongst the you know 
top 100 villains of the last few years, he was like number 83. Which is actually pretty low when you uh, look Which, at the, the I mean, it's, other ones. But, and so here's the thing, I mean, I, I hated Tobey Maguire as oh. Spider-Man because...